In recent years, China's wealthy individuals have been continuously leaving the country, leading to a surge in the number of emigrants. On June 13th, Henley and Partners, a UK-based consultancy specializing in investment migration, released the 2023 Henley Private Wealth Migration Report. According to the report, it is projected that in 2023, approximately 13,500 Chinese high net worth individuals with assets exceeding 1 million U.S. dollars will emigrate, ranking China first in terms of the number of emigrants globally. This figure represents an increase of 2,700 individuals compared to the previous year, once again breaking records for wealthy Chinese immigrants. Why are so many Chinese billionaires choosing to emigrate overseas? Let's first look at a story recounted by a private business owner. On June 23rd, Twitter user John shared a tweet introducing the true story of his classmate, who went from being a billionaire to being in debt and recently immigrated to the United States. For the sake of convenience, let's refer to John's classmate as Mike. According to John's account, Mike was the owner of a private enterprise in China. Specializing in unique cultural and creative projects, the years 2018 to 2019 were the peak of his business, with several projects of varying sizes across the country and plans for going public. However, the three-year-long pandemic, coupled with the Chinese government's stringent zero-COVID policy, dealt a heavy blow to the private economy and destroyed everything he had built. Consequently, he went from being a billionaire to a heavily indebted individual. As Mike narrates, officials across various regions in China don't do much and strictly follow Xi Jinping's directives. One of Mike's projects was situated along the Yangtze River, previously showcased nationwide, and was the local government holding a 49% stake. In April 2018, during a visit to Wuhan, Xi Jinping issued a directive to protect the ecological environment of the Yangtze River basin. Overnight, his legally operated and highly profitable project was completely demolished. There was no compensation, no room for negotiation. Having the government as a shareholder was equivalent to a worthless piece of paper, and he lost the lawsuit. Mike further explains that China's economic situation is currently in an extremely severe state. The headquarters of Mike's company is located in a provincial capital city in China. Known for its thriving economy and foreign trade, however, even there, around forty thousand government employees, or what we commonly refer to as civil servants, are struggling to receive their salaries. It's not a county-level city, but a highly developed provincial capital city. At various levels of the Chinese government, there are schemes to seize profitable private enterprises through joint ventures. In some projects, the government only invests one yuan but demands a 49% or 51% stake. Private business owners either have to compromise to obtain the project or close down. When Zhang asked Mike if there was still a possibility for a comeback now that the central government is once again emphasizing private enterprises, Mike responded, "Take out as much money as you can and leave as soon as possible, meaning emigrate." No one has confidence in Xi Jinping anymore. John reflects, "We have heard similar stories from different sources, but hearing it firsthand from my old classmate still comes as a shock." Mike's experience is actually representative of millions of private businesses in China. From his story, it is not difficult to understand why so many Chinese billionaires are choosing to immigrate. We have previously reported on numerous occasions that Chinese entrepreneurs and wealthy individuals have faced various pressures from the Chinese Communist Party, led by Xi Jinping in recent years. For example, Xi's emphasis on common prosperity has led to wealthy individuals being targeted online, resulting in concerns among all billionaires that they may become victims of communism. As a result, they are quickly seeking ways to transfer their funds and make arrangements to leave the country. Preparing themselves with an exit strategy. Furthermore, over the past three years, the CCP's domestic epidemic control policies, economic policies, and diplomatic policies have essentially been considered by many as a complete failure. Domestically, under the guise of regulation, the CCP has cracked down on multiple industries, including education and online industries, driving some industries to the brink of collapse. Strict zero-COVID policies have placed many private enterprises in dire straits. 
On the international front, the CCP has pursued a wolf warrior diplomacy strategy and has been confronted by trade and technology wars from the international community, resulting in many foreign trade companies closing down due to a lack of orders. It can be said that the current state of the Chinese economy is deteriorating rapidly. Such a business environment is highly unfavorable for billionaires, as not only is it difficult to make money, but they may also incur even greater losses. Given this future outlook, it's not surprising that billionaires are fleeing China. Moreover, under the CCP's authoritarian system characterized by the symbiotic relationship between power and wealth, many billionaires have made money due to their political connections. They either spend money to cultivate relationships with officials or are officials themselves. In such an environment of collusion between power and money and rampant corruption, Almost everyone has voluntarily or involuntarily engaged in wrongdoing, which means almost everyone has potential vulnerabilities. Therefore, rather than staying in the country and becoming the next sacrificial lamb in the anti-corruption campaign, it is better to escape overseas early and live the rest of their lives without constant fear and worry. In fact, the trend of wealthy individuals leaving China has been gradually emerging since a decade ago. Recently, netizens have discovered that many Chinese billionaires have already immigrated abroad with their capital, including the major shareholder of Country Garden, Yang Huiyan, the founder of Sunak China, Sun Hongbin, the founder of Nine Dragons Paper, Zhang Yin, or China's richest woman, the founder chairman and CEO of Soho China, Pan Shiyi, and his wife, Zhang Xin, among others. U.S.-based China commentator Li Lin Yi once stated that during the 20th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party in October 2022, Xi Jinping secured an unprecedented third term, and the new Politburo Standing Committee was filled with Xi's confidants. This shattered any remaining hope that entrepreneurs and wealthy individuals had in the CCP regime. Regardless of the recent favorable rhetoric from the CCP, these entrepreneurs have already lost faith and cannot simply change their minds based on a few kind words. The current actions of the regime are clearly driven by concerns over the economy rather than genuine goodwill for the country. Li Lin Yi said the billionaires, even including those with some wealth, are transferring their assets overseas. This not only has direct negative implications for the economy, but also reflects distrust politically. It is a vote of no confidence, and this is not good news for the CCP. It may even become one of the factors accelerating the downfall of its regime. Japanese economics media, the Nikkei, recently reported that despite an estimated 823,800 millionaires in China, this trend of capital outflow will cause tens of millions of dollars in wealth to vanish from China, further worsening the slowdown of China's economic growth. The report cited Andrew Amoyos, head of research at New World Wealth, who stated that wealth growth in China has been slowing down in recent years. This implies that the recent outflow of wealth may be more destructive than before. The analyst mentioned that China's economy experienced strong growth from 2000 to 2017. But since then, the growth of wealth and millionaires in China has been relatively sluggish. The rich list released in May by China revealed that the total wealth of the top 10 richest individuals in China was 2.2 trillion Chinese yuan, which evaporated by 291.6 billion yuan, representing a significant decline of 11.68% compared to the previous year. Following Xi Jinping's third term, the authorities have recently initiated a crackdown on private enterprises conducting a series of investigations, including some consulting firms. At the same time, the government has tightened control over the technology and finance industries. For example, in February of this year, the mysterious disappearance of Chinese celebrity investor and founder of Huaxing Capital Holdings, Bao Fan, caused panic. The company later revealed that Bao Fan is currently cooperating with relevant Chinese authorities in an investigation and the company will comply with the investigation upon request. So where have these billionaires been flowing to? In the past, the preferred destinations for wealthy Chinese immigrants were the United States, followed by Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, and Singapore. However, in recent years, Singapore has become a popular location for Chinese wealth migration. 
In 2022, approximately 11,000 millionaires immigrated to Singapore, leading to a surge in local property prices and cost of living. According to AFP, citing individuals operating Chinese immigration businesses in Singapore in February of this year, Singapore as an ancient financial center meets all the requirements of exiled entrepreneurs. According to Song Sung Wen, an economist at CIMB Private Banking, Singapore is a very convenient neutral zone where billionaires can conduct their business. This city-state maintains close security relations with the U.S. while maintaining strong trade relations with China. Some wealthy individuals in China now say, my money is truly mine only when it is here. AFP reports that the arrival of extremely wealthy Chinese individuals in Singapore has not gone unnoticed. Some of them have already settled in luxury mansions overlooking the sea on Sentosa Island. AIMS, a company that provides relocation and immigration services in Singapore, was surprised as well. Pierce Chung, the CEO, remarked, It's crazy. You can't imagine how much they've spent to buy these luxury homes. He mentioned that at a gathering in one of his clients' homes, he saw Chinese clients displaying a rare Japanese whiskey, Yamazaki 55, which is valued at $800,000 per bottle. Pierce Chung's company assists newcomers in finding luxury apartments, hiring drivers, or enrolling their children in public schools. The newly arrived wealthy individuals enjoy driving around in Rolls Royces or Bentleys. They also frequently visit exclusive golf clubs such as Sentosa Golf Club, where the annual membership fee for foreigners is 670000 Benny Teo, the director of golf marketing consulting firm Blazon, said, Many of them are young Chinese individuals dressed in fashionable designer clothing, and they often come and go alone. The AFP report points out that even if China does not continue its zero-COVID policy in the future, the trend of emigration may persist. The increasingly tense relationship between Beijing and Washington is also prompting some entrepreneurs to leave. The wave of wealthy individuals fleeing will also accelerate the social crisis in China. Tang Jingyuan, a Chinese expert on U.S.-China relations, previously analyzed that if a society experiences a loss of its wealthy and intellectual elite, it indicates that it is facing a severe crisis. The departure of the backbone of society further accelerates a social crisis, leading to a vicious cycle. I believe this is the greatest impact. In the short term, the concentrated emigration of the upper class will quickly take away a substantial amount of wealth. The rapid transfer of foreign exchange assets in the short term directly impacts China's foreign exchange system, even jeopardizing foreign exchange security and foundation. In the medium term, if the outflow reaches a significant scale, the social wealth available to the mainland population will decrease. With a large-scale transfer of assets, mainland companies will experience a rapid reduction in investment and employment opportunities, inevitably leading to an exacerbation of wealth inequality. In the long term, outflow of talent from the backbone of society will result in a shortage of innovation and intellectual resources, significantly limiting or even declining social development. Tang Jinyuan stated that the entire affluent and middle-class strata are experiencing an unprecedented sense of anxiety, realizing that the security of their assets is no longer guaranteed. In addition to the wealthy, government officials have a deeper understanding of the fact that the CCP has no way out. Therefore, there is a significant increase in officials who send their spouses and children overseas and prepare an exit strategy. Once there are any signs of trouble, they can immediately leave and abandon the sinking ship. Their methods of managing wealth may differ, but their starting point and motivation are the same, Tang Jinyuan said. They all know that the CCP system is a sinking ship, and they all lack confidence. However, they all seek to take advantage of their power or resource advantages to profit as much as possible.